Dr. DeSoto by William Steele. Dr. DeSoto, the dentist, did very good work so he had no end of patience. Thus close to his own side, bald chimmons, etc., sat in the regular dentist chair. Larger animals sat on the floor while Dr. DeSoto stood on a little. For extra large animals, he had a special loom. There, Dr. DeSoto was hoisted up to the patient's mouth by his assistant, who also happened to be his wife. Dr. DeSoto was especially popular with the big animals. He was able to work inside their mouths, wearing rubbers to keep his feet dry, and his fingers were so delicate and his tool so dainty, they could hardly feel any pain. Being a mouse, he refused to treat animals dangerous to mice, and he said so on his sign. When the doorbell rang, he and his wife would look out the window. They wouldn't admit even the most timid-looking cat, the Dr. DeSoto dentist. Cats and other dangerous animals that accepted for treatment. One day, when they looked out, they saw a dress fox with a flannel bandage around his jaw. I cannot treat you, sir, Dr. Lissero shouted. Sir, haven't you run my sign? Please, the fox wailed. Have mercy, I'm suffering. And he wept so bitterly, it was pitiful to see. Just a moment, said Dr. Lissero. That poor fox. He whispered to his wife, What shall we do? Let's risk it, said Mrs. DeSoto. She placed the buzzer and let the fox in. He was up the stairs in a flash. Bless your little heart, he cried. Falling to his knees, I beg you, do something. My tooth is killing me. Sit on the floor, sir, said Dr. DeSoto. And remove the bandit, please. Dr. DeSoto climbed up the rail and bravely entered the fox's mouth. Ooh, wow, he gasped. The fox had a rotten by feet and an unusually bad breath. This tooth will have to come out, said Dr. DeSoto. Dr. DeSoto announced, But we can make you a new one. Just stop the pen, whimpered the fox, wiping some tears away. Despite his misery, he realized he had a tasty little model in his mouth, and his jaw began to quiver. Keep open, yelled Dr. DeSoto. Wide open, yelled his wife. I'm giving you gas now, said Dr. DeSoto. You won't feel a thing when I yank that tooth. Soon the fox was in the rat. Mmm, yummy, he mumbled. How I love them raw, with just a pinch of salt and a dry white wine. They could guess what he was dreaming about. Mrs. DeSoto handed her husband a pole to keep the fox's mouth open. Dr. DeSoto fastened his extractor to the bad tooth. Then he and his wife began turning the witch. Finally, with a sucking sound, the tooth popped out and hung swing in the air. I am bleeding, the fox yelled when he came to. Dr. DeSoto ran up the riddle and stuffed some gauze in the hole. The worst is over, he said. I'll have your new tooth ready tomorrow. Be here at 11 sharp. The fox tail Uzi and goodbye and left. On his way home, he wondered if it would be shabby of him to eat the desertos when the job was done. After office hours, Mrs. DeSoto molded a tooth of pure gold and polish it. Low with salt indeed, muttered Dr. DeSoto. How foolish to trust the fox. 
he didn't know what he was saying," said Mrs. Dizzardo. "Why should he harm us? We are helping him because he's a fox," said Doctor Dizzardo. "They are wicked, wicked creatures." That night, the Dizzardos lay awake, worrying. Should they let him in tomorrow? Mrs. Dizzardo wondered. Once I start a job," said the dentist firmly. "I finish it." My father was saying the same way. But we must do something to protect ourselves," said his wife. They talked and talked until they formed a plan. I think it will work," said Doctor Lucero. A minute later, he was snoring. The next morning. Promptly at eleven, a very cheerful fox turned up. He was feeling not a particle of pain. When Doctor Lucero got into his mouth, he stepped it short for a minute, moment, then opened wide and laughed. Just a joke, he chortled. Be serious," said the dentist sharply. We have work to we have work to do. His wife was lugging the heavy tools up the ladder. Oh, I love it! Exclaimed the fox. It's just beautiful. Doctor Nisaro set the gold tools in neat socket and hooked it up to the teeth on both sides. The fox caressed the new tools with his tongue. My, it feels good," he thought. "I really shouldn't eat them. On the other hand, how can I resist?" "We are not finished," said Doctor Lizardo, holding up a light jug. "I have here a remarkable proliferation developed only recently by my wife and me. We just..." One application, you can be rid of toothaches forever. How would you like to be the first one to receive this unique treatment? I certainly would," the fox declared. "I'd be honored." He hated any kind of personal pain. "You will never have to see us again," said Doctor Lizardo. No one will see you again," said the fox to himself. He had definitely made up his mind to eat them, with the help of his brand new tools. Doctor Lucero stepped into the fox's mouth with a bucket of secret formula, and proceeded to paint each tooth. He hummed as he worked. Mrs. Dissero stood by on the riddle, pointing out spots he had missed. The fox looked very happy. When the dentist was done, he stepped out. Now close your jaws tight, he said, and keep them closed for a full minute. The fox did as he was told. Then he tried to open his mouth, but his teeth were stuck together. I excuse me, I should have mentioned," said Doctor Dissardo. "You won't be able to open your mouth for a day or two. The script formula must first permeate the dentin. But don't worry, no pain ever again." The fox was done. He stared. He stared at Doctor Lucero, then at his wife. They smiled and waited. All he could do was say, "Thank you very much." Through his clenched teeth, and get up and leave. He tried to do so with dignity. Then he stumbled down the stairs in a daze. Doctor Dissolo and his 
system had Oxbox the fox. They kissed each other and took the last of day off. Of the day off.